For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to GibboPresents.com. It's Gibbo, and right now I'm joined by the ambassador of hip hop reggae here to discuss Sugar Kane, his collaboration with Sugar Bear, and his musical career to date, which has spanned more than two and a half decades. It is Ravon. How are you? I'm good, Gibbo. What's up, my friend? No respect. You know what I mean? <laughs> Big ups. <laughs> you have been working very hard recently promoting your single on Troyton's Happy Days Rhythm, Sugar Cane with Sugar Bear. So to start with, introduce Sugar Bear to anyone who is not familiar with him and explain to me how this collaboration came about. Well, um, yes, you know, definitely been uh, pushing this, this new single, uh, Sugar Cane. You know, uh, Sugar Bear is a, a Jamaican you know, reggae artist that uh, lives in the Bronx. You know, so, you know, it's part of that whole New York uh, reggae fraternity. I'm in Brooklyn. He's in the Bronx. Um, I got a big up, you know, DJ Willie Daniels, you know, also a, a, a resident DJ. But, you know, he's uh, he's nationwide and he kind of brought us together for this song. You know, he, he brought the rhythm, which is from uh, Triton. Rami, which is a uh, um, he's a pretty big uh, producer in the reggae circles, and um, you know it, all, all a lot of great elements. You know what I mean? Came together on this song, so I think that's what's gonna you know make this song go all the way because it has all those elements of you know just feel good stuff. It's a feel good song. It's feel good lyrics. You know it. it we're not this nobody. Nobody enough to feel no way, you know what I mean? It's just an enjoyment song. And, you know, that's that's what made, you know, brought me to this point. You know, most of my music is, you know, f- you know, feel good music, happy music, enjoyable music. Yeah. So, you, um, yeah. You just released the video for it recently. Where did you film it? Uh, that, that video was filmed in Los Angeles, um, you know, uh, directed by Irie Eyes. And, um... You know, it's, 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 it was a fun video. You know, it was actually released like about two days ago. Like we dropped it um, midnight uh, a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, a lot of people have been looking for the video because we've been going heavy, heavy on the promotion online. And, you know, a lot of people have been sharing the song and talking about it. So it's been getting, you know, very, very good response and, and support. So a lot of people have been waiting for the video. So the video is, is now available. So go online, YouTube, and all your online video sites and look for it. If you don't see it on there, you got to say, oh, can I please get that Sugar Cane video by Rayvon and Sugar Bear online, please? Because we need to see that song. We need some Sugar Cane in our life. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, you know, and, and it's due. And this is just the beginning because, you know, the music business has changed, especially, you know, where reggae is concerned and, you know, reggae mainstream. So, you know, you, you, you got to keep, you know, keep pounding the song because there's so much music out there, so much competition, and you know, you 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 mixing it up with a lot of, you know, a lot of the greats, a lot of big wigs, you know, and we're doing it independent, you know, all the way, grassroots up. So you know, the people push it. So you know, we going all the way with it. So you know, it's it's the work. So that's what it is. It's the work. It's is where it is right now in the industry. You got to go out there, no matter how long you've been in the game, you still got to go out there and you know introduce your material to. To the to the fans, to the public, and, and and to the new fans. Every ten years, it's a generation, you know. So, yeah. Speaking of putting in the work, you've held many events to promote Sugar Cane in locations like California, Jamaica, and Montreal. I believe you also had promotional CD copies pressed, and as oh. we mentioned, you've just released the video. We don't often see artists push one single so hard for so many months. Do you feel that artists are too quick to focus their attention on the next song? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, you know, because we're in a singles market, you know, and, and everything is going fast. But, um, you know, if, if there's, there's a certain formula that works, it's just like, there's only one way to make pancakes. <laughs> you can't you can't bake them 
You can't broil them. You got to put them in a frying pan. You know what I'm saying? Or something similar to a frying pan. So I'm just going back. You know, we're just going back to that original formula. And we only do that because you have a, in certain songs that you get that, that response that you know you're going to have to push and get it out there. And just get it to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And some, it, it may go over a year. It, you, sometimes you can't say, well, oh, it's a song of this summer. You got to say it's a song of this summer and next summer and maybe the summer after that. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, if you look at some of the, the, the Caribbean songs that's out right now, for the, or the songs that's made it within the last, you know, the last three hit Caribbean songs mainstream, they've been out a couple of years, three years. Some of them even gotten some remixes as well. You know, because, you know, he, 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 you just got to keep hitting until it hits and you know you got something. And if the, once the people are with you, that's when you know you got to keep going. If the people are not with you no more, then you know more. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Can you compare how you would promote a single in, say, the 90s or even the early 2000s as opposed to today? Is it essentially the same formula? What's changed? What's the same? Well, um, some of the street promotion has changed. They're no longer like these vans being wrapped. You know, you used to wrap vans. <laughs> they used to wrap buses, you know what I mean, with your material and stuff. It, you know, you used to drive around the city and you see a you know posters of oh new album coming soon and all, all, all you know a lot of that has been cut out you know what i mean it's online right now you gotta up your online fan base and you know keep it going online that's more or less where the biggest and the heaviest promotion there's still some street promotion but it's not as dominant as it was you know in in, in the 90s right now it's all online because you know you're dealing with you know, your global fan base. So you're not just, you You know, you can't have your van driving in Frankfurt, in Amsterdam, in London, in Jamaica, in Brooklyn. It's going to be pretty costly. <laughs> so if you're doing it independent, that's what you got to do. You got to go online and kind of, you know, make it work for you. And, you know, and that, that's what it's all about. Stay on there, you know. One yeah. very important way of promoting a song online today is of course the video it's arguably more important than ever before in fact i'm sure most people would say that it is you released the no guns no murder video back in 94 when far few videos were being made were you ahead of the curve in terms of realizing the importance of visuals to go along with a great song I don't know if I was ahead of my time. I, I just know that um, I have good ideas and I, you know, I, I try to work with people that have good ideas, you know? So, um, you know, doing a video at that time was like, it, it was a, it was a, it was a no brainer because that's when the videos was really the main thing for your promotion. Cause you had a, you had tons of video shows on, um, on TV, on cable. I think, I don't even know, maybe MTV was still playing videos at that time. MTV <laughs> was playing videos. <laughs> so um, then you had a, a, another outlet called uh, The Box. You know, so there's a lot of different video outlets that that were like there where everybody went to to see what was up next and what was coming out. Um, but right now, you know, it's a YouTube market where the videos is concerned and then everything kind of go up underneath that and there's a there's, there's a few video programs but the video programs that's that's left they're still pretty you know they're on there they're on they're on spot and they're you know there's something to, to be reckoned with still so you know you just got to figure out you know what avenue you want to go as an artist to to actually jump start your your song or your career whatever you're trying to do no Guns, No Murder was a yeah. hugely popular single for you. It featured, I believe, in three Billboard charts at, at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it was produced it. by Funk Flex and Frankie Cutlass. Can you tell me how the link up with them came about and what the story behind the song is? Um, that song, I, I almost didn't even do that song. 
you know what only because i came in from I, I had a small tour and i came back and i was so tired that night that i'm like nothing can't get me out this bed tonight i mean i go sleep and then like an hour after that before i even fell asleep a phone call came in frankie cutler yo we at the studio with flex blah 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 we have a song idea blah, blah, blah. and i'm like ah all right yeah i'm, I'm gonna go down there but I didn't know if I was really going to make it because I was tired. But, you know, the Almighty God said, wake up, yo. <laughs> and I got up and I went down there. And I left that studio 8 o'clock in the morning. I got there like midnight and left at 8 o'clock in the morning. But I left with a hit. And I got to give thanks for that because, you know what I mean? It's like just, just the vibes and the energy of the, that song just, you know, that was my first, you know. I, I did Big Up and Rivers of Babylon before that. So people, you know, kind of got introduced to me as a singer in the industry but i was chatting first you know what i'm saying my first song my first uh recording with living room records was a song called um drive proper and uh, sweet and pretty you know what i mean and then down the line came you know big up so when bill when when i hit with no guns no murder people was calling me they like yo some guy on the radio what's your name like no, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean, but it was a, it was a, it was a good vibe, and you know, and at that time, a lot of we had a lot of stuff going on in the parties, we had a lot of shootings and stuff, black party, everything was getting shot up, everything. So that song was kind of fitting at that particular moment in the nineties. Car, anybody living in New York in the nineties know New York was rough. <laughs> you know what I mean, it wasn't a simple place to, you know, to go party. You had to have, you know, the thing. So. You know, that, that 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 was that was like my opening as far as um like mainstream because that definitely took me to different from took me from underground reggae to doing a lot of mainstream shows with Fuji's and and a lot of different rap artists and I was living at Hot Ninety Seven for a while more or less just doing interviews and promoting. I, it was it was a good time. It was one of the good times of um you know the music my music career. Speaking as a reggae artist who has achieved crossover success, what do you believe the key to attaining this is? Is it production, marketing, where you're based, geographic location, all of the above, or is it something else? All of the above, and I'm going to add on a few. Um, you know, belief in your, in, in, in your music and in what you're doing. Don't try to really follow nobody else. You know, you can follow some examples, but you, your core got to come from within you, your heart. You know, because that's what people is going to accept and that's what people know is real because it's coming from you. You know, so, you know, once you, 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 you once you project that, you know, people are going to know if it's, if, it's a re if it's a real energy or if it's a fraudulent energy. <laughs> so they might go call you a fraud. You know what I mean? But, but if it's real and it's from the heart and it's true to what you're, you're, you know, what you're true to, then, you know, people are gonna accept it, and they're gonna accept you as an artist, and then you can you're gonna build that fan base, that following, that cult. That's where you see when you have artists come out and they build that grassroots cult following. Is you know, it's because of that. Over the last few years, Cranium has managed to develop a following in both the dancehall and the R&B and hip hop worlds. And this has led to him working with artists like Tory Lanez, Ty Dolla Sign, and uh, Wizkid too. What are your thoughts on his success to date? And what do you believe the ceiling is? What is he capable of achieving? Well, me no cranium personally, if you're a good local. Well, um, from him, him stepping at the thing, I kind of, I, I met him over at Ranch Entertainment when, um, there's a rhythm called Satara that they were getting together. You know what I mean? And he had a song on there called um, Pressure Bus Pipe or something like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I said that song, yeah, but artists are bad. I mean, nowadays, I'm not, I, um, it takes a lot for artists to impress me. He, he's good, he impressed me. He have, he have, because he, he just don't have a, like a one song or a one, you know what I mean? I heard like three, four songs of them, and I like all his songs. You know what I mean? So. He's one of the, 
he's a good artist coming out of again New York City that you know New York City was due they busting out some more artists <laughs> it was getting kind of like cold but um if we big up cranium I, I don't know if we big up sugar beer now you know what I mean and some other artists coming out of New York but yeah man the cranium vibe wicked love the energy you know what I mean so large up yourself in general bum yeah you say you're not easily impressed what does it take then for an up-and-coming artist like a sugar bear to make you want to work with them what's the thing you're looking for you have to have something you know what i mean and uh you gotta have the 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 the, the mental number one because you could be you could be a good artist and have a lot of talent but this is a rough business it's a rough game you gotta have the mental in order to keep up with it to stay with it and understand that you know if it don't happen overnight just believe in yourself and and believe in god and the music and it's gonna happen and um i look for something that you know when 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 you're looking at an artist as, and he's a new artist or she's a new artist you gotta be like all right what do they got do they they gotta have something that's gonna grab not only you because now you put yourself in the spectator and the consumers cheer you understand so it's like if i see something the consumer and the spectator also is gonna see something not if they're not, not the same thing something similar so whether it's a voice because voice is important because if you don't if you come out and you sound different that means that's some that's your signature sound that's a plus right there image is another thing you know when I come out and just look like some little very very and tell you, you know what I mean it's not exciting you gotta excite the people you know what I'm saying your music got to be dope too it gotta be up there when so even if I'm, I'm not even seeing you I'm listening to the music I'm like man this is so you got image music your, your voice your delivery also if you got melodies all of these things are things that say yeah that's a great artist right there that's what i look for melodies voice your sound your projection your delivery image lyrics your lyrical content as well how you put it together i mean i'm going a little deep you know i mean everybody might not be as deep you know you think but a lot of people look for those things you're I mean, giving us I, I, gems I, I, here this is the knowledge we need to hear from an but, industry veteran but i mean i have i have a label now it's called gtc entertainment I'm about to sign distribution again, and and um, I'm gonna let it, it's, it ain't to the paper yet, but it's right there. Contract is up and ready, and it's, it's a really good look. And when you hear the, the whole thing, you're gonna be like, "Wow, are we? You're supposed to develop that on my show." <laughs> but I'm getting, letting you know and letting your your fans and, and everybody that's listening to you right now that you know we, we're about to do some really some really great things. And you know, I have to now put myself in that that other side of. Um, you know bringing artists and trying to you know find that next artist and introduce them to to the reggae world to the world to the music world you know what i mean I, my last project which was my, my album i put out you know independent on my label so it kind of gave me like an inside you know because all the time i've been doing the artist thing but it's a whole different vibe and you know uh learning experience when you're going from an executive producer or you know a, a label head kind of thing so you know i i, I think I've, I've i've gained that that knowledge so i mean you know when i so when i'm looking for artists in the future that's what I, that's what i'm looking for that's what's going to impress me because that's what's going to keep you you know give you that longevity you don't want to be like a burger king artist a mcdonald artist that means that's fast forward in and out you want to be a meal prepared on the table you know what i mean whether i thought true or whatever but you want to be that thing that's going to make people say yes i'm f i'm fulfilled i'm satisfied with this with this cd with this project with this artist do you have your roster of artists ready at the moment or are you still looking well i i have i have my eye on some people you know what I mean? And I have some people within the mix already, you know, that's that's been 
you know, you know, Rocky with me, you know, uh, big up Gala Wasp, you know, he's in Jamaica. Um, again, Sugar be a right, the saw. We have all the other. I, wanna, I ain't gonna reveal until I'm ready to reveal. <laughs> but just look out for the next GTC um, thing. And GTC stands for Get That Cheddar Entertainment. You know what I mean? So, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's what we're doing. Do you feel that your albums are underrated? And if so, why is this the case? Well, um, I would say I, I, good music would never die. So it's never too late for you know good music to be discovered. Because even me as a lover of music, I hear a lot of songs, I hear a lot of good albums, artists, and um, you know it might not get the focus or the spotlight that it should get at the moment in time, but it's it's good, it's great, you know. And um, it's never too late for everybody to log on, to, to, to be discovered. You know, um, in some of my albums, you know, there was it, some, some politics got involved with it. But it's, it's the nature of the, nature of the game. Every artist has a story to tell, or two, or three, or even four of things that didn't work out how it's to work out. But, you know... Um, I think my albums did what it was supposed to do. The My Bad album, when My Bad, the single, um, went for um, ads on mainstream radio. It was the number one most added across mainstream. When Two Way, Two Way was actually the first single that went out. It was the second most added. You know, and for, for me, those are, those are accomplishments for me. You know what I mean? Small Island artist, Small Island brother. Living in, you know, what I mean, in the hood in, in Brooklyn, you know, and achieving certain things, you know, whether it's being doing a month with James Brown in Europe or singing We Are the World with Michael Jackson on stage to even just getting a, a number one added song. You know, what I mean, I'm always thankful for for these things. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, these things that, you know, that, that I, I always rest back on when I'm getting ready to launch out again you seem to be out in california on a regular basis and i would guess it's a place you've been going to for many years can you remember the first time you went out to the west coast yeah i think it was for like the austin your hall show wow <laughs> yeah which was a is a yeah it was a good experience because it was like straight red carpet thing you know limo you know Five star, well, four star hotel night, yeah, swimming pool. It was nice, but yeah, that was like around that was that was in like the you know, mid nineties, and um, that was the beginning of a lot of lot of lots of trips. My the my bad video was shot in L.A. Two way video was shot in L.A. The one more shot video was shot in L.A. Now this one here, um, Sugar Cane is shot in L.A. I just shot another one, Trouble Again. That's the new Roots Rock single about to drop uh, in a September, top of um, October. And um, that's Ray Vanna in, in a Roots Rock style. You know, Sugar Cane is a dancehall party style. Trouble Again is a Roots Rock style. Roots Rock rhythm, big up evidence music out of Switzerland. And um, we're just working for the people. <laughs> Do you feel California is overlooked as a reggae market and has the scene out there, or should I say, how much has the scene out there developed since you first went out there? Um, I would say California is a big festival market. I think, they, you know, I don't know, maybe in the States, they must, they probably keep the most reggae festivals. I'm not sure, but I think so. They, they probably keep the most reggae festivals. Also, Nevada and, um, you know, the surrounding areas, Nevada, um, Colorado, they, they, they also keep a lot of um, reggae festivals. Um, it's a little different. They're into a little bit more, you know, it's, 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 it's a roots reggae and then dancehall. And then, you know, on the East Coast, it's like dancehall, then roots. But 
Me, I consider myself, I've been doing a global reggae thing for a long time. You know what I mean? And that's where I'm at. So, because I've been doing it like that, I got to give people some roots. I got to give people some lovers rock. I got to give you some dancehall, whether sugar cane, whether bashment party, whether big up. And I got to give you some hip hop, whether reggae, whether it be pretty, whether it be no guns, no murder. Hey, check out that. Um, I got one with, with two short. A reggae remix mashup produced by Dennis Blaze. This is a new type of flavor for Rayvon in the, in the, in the hip hop thing. It's called What's My Favorite Word? <laughs> Why you gotta say it like short? <laughs> What's my favorite word? Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, mud. You can check for that online. We, it's not released, but you know, you gotta look for it online. <laughs> For those who don't know, Dennis Blaze, a big DJ out in San Diego, does a lot of remixes, yeah. both hip hop yeah. and reggae. Very talented yeah. guy. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Before we finish, one last question, big picture. I know it can be difficult for people to sometimes take a step back and look at their own life or career objectively, but can you assess your influence on Bayesian artists that have come along after you a few have had varying degrees of international success but one young lady from the island is doing particularly well for herself these days just happens to be one of the most popular artists in the world right now rihanna <laughs> for sure yeah I, yeah 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 I, I i i love i love rihanna's music you know i love what she's doing um from she came out, she's 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 been a um, dope artist, and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of talent in uh in our uh, Barbados, and um you know hopefully I can get down there and pull out some of them. I've been um yeah I've been mixing it up with 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 uh, a, a few um, artists in our uh, Barbados. Big up and Ed, uh, Edwin Edwin uh, Yearwood. Um, there's another artist, but he might have killed me. Ter- but anyway. Uh, bigger part so um uh, uh Chantel. Um you know this is it's a this is a nice list and I hope to do some more work with, with, with some artists down there and um you know and, and just and just and just keep it going. I don't know what my influence is yet on that because you know they gotta tell me <laughs> I don't you know I just know I just I just do music. I just try to do, you know, I put a hundred percent into the music that I put out there, you know, in, in, in every aspect, you know, and, and when I'm gone and long gone and, and then either you or your son is interviewing the next base and you gotta, you gotta ask him that same question. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I've hope, I've hope that I've, you know, put out stuff that, you know, people can, you know, learn from. But definitely, going around and doing it for a while, a lot of, you know, artists now that listen to my first song when they were maybe five, ten years old, they, they, you know, they tell me, man, you've inspired me. And, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of that now. So, I, yeah, I can tell you it's been, it's been a blessing to be doing, you know, what I've been doing. And I got much more to come. Refresh, share me. Mad. <laughs> Before we finish, is there anything yeah. else you'd like to mention? Anyone you want to big up? Yeah, I want to big up all the fans, all the supporters. You know, it's been a nice journey, and you know, you everybody, you guys been rocking and riding with me, and you know, you're gonna keep rocking and riding with me. I got much more in store, but to blank, you know, launch off some more stuff. You know, um, big up, big up the bridging, big up everybody at GTC Entertainment, big up Irie Eyes. Big up Sugar Beer, big up the whole Brooklyn crew, Galawas, everybody in Jamaica, Galdees, look out for Galladay bounces coming up, big show at the end of the year, you know what I mean? Big up Mills Music, big up a friend of them over a ranch, you know what I mean? And, and the list goes on. Yeah, I know it's a peace and one love, yeah. Sugar Cane, Rave One's collaboration with Sugar Bear is available for digital download now. Be sure to purchase a copy of the Happy Days Rhythm compilation, which it features on if you haven't already. And why not check out the recently released visuals for a single to Rave One? Well, I mean, I'm in a fit. Hold on. Black Shadow Records. 
Triton Music, Willie Daniels, yeah. <laughs> large up, boom. And you, Gibbo, large up yourself. Straight. Rayvon, thanks a lot. I wish you continued success. One love. Gibbo, Gibbo presents... presents.